Hello, everybody. Hey, Jonah. Hey, Joe. I'm inviting you to my party. Oh, no, you're in Chris. Uh, I'm going to invite hey, you. Hey, How you doing? Hey, Chris. Don't go over there. Do not go over there. Do not go over there. Stay here. Who's who's shouting? What's going on? Hey Ben, hey Dan. I'm in a room with my son who's gaming, so I'm going on the mute. <laughs> oh, there it is. I heard Noel's voice. I couldn't see. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. You entered five, three, nine. Three, zero, one. This meeting ID is not <coughs> Please re-enter your meeting ID. Who's doing the meeting ID thing? Can you mute yourself, wherever that one is? Right. You have not entered any numbers. Please re- How do I figure out? Can you, you just- entered five, three, nine, three, zero, one. This meeting ID does not exist. Mute all. <laughs> there must be an option for it, right? Yeah. Try but it. there is a mute all, yeah. It's a uh, all. All right, I found it. There we go. Cool. Okay. That cuts that out. All right. I can see people are still connecting, so we'll give everyone another minute or so to finish hooking up. Oh, who else we got? Hey, Rob. Who else? Ah, oh, hey, Anna. few people I don't know this is nice cool all right guys I think there might be another couple of people joining still but we're gonna get cracking on so uh, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna put it into presentation mode now can you guys see that? Okay. Cool. Perfect. All right. Let me move this bit off the screen. Okay. Default to mute for new people. Okay. I think it might be set to do that now. Fingers crossed. So what I'm going to do today is talk you through the process that we used uh, to double the number of leads uh, without getting any more traffic and show you basically as step by step as I can what we did and so how you can kind of duplicate it and do it for yourself. Um, as my little reminder to record because I know I'm going to get in shit otherwise if uh, there you go that's recording perfect. Okay so the problem is this is the, the issue that people tell me about at the moment they want more email subscribers so why would you want more email subscribers? Because at the moment, there's all this money on the table and this is you leaving. So more email subscribers equals more profits, especially if you've got a long-term funnel in place with email marketing. And this is, here's the funnel that we recommend. If you've seen any of my talks before, you have probably seen this. Um, if not, I'm gonna send through the links after this talk to the other ones that I did where I spell all these out, but this is the ideal webinar funnel. And this converts fantastically uh, as a front end funnel for converting more people who sign up into buying what you've got on offer. This one is particularly for online courses because that's what we do. Uh, but there are versions of this uh, that I've shared before for SaaS businesses and service businesses and high end services and all kinds of stuff like that. So that's one part of it. And the other part that we recommend building is this, which is a tripwire funnel at the front end, which I've explained a bunch of times um, in the past. I won't go into it here. And then long-term email follow-up with different promotions. So if you've got that in place, then email marketing is going to be hugely valuable to you. But whatever you've got in place at the moment, more emails, subscribers is going to increase your profits. So let me spell out where people are at the moment with this normally. Most people that I see have got a 0.5% opt-in rate. A good one is 2% and excellent is 5%. So what does that mean? 0.5% means the number of, email, a number of emails you get a month divided by the number of website, amount, website traffic you've got times by 100 to figure out the percentage. So most people I see are 0.5 to maybe 1%. If it's good, it's 2%, excellent, it's 
So what I want you to do, if you possibly can now, if you know these numbers, is figure out where you are at the moment. So if you can grab a calculator on your computer or your phone or just do this on a piece of paper and figure out how many email subscribers do you get a month at the moment? About, approximately. And then write down how many website visitors you get a month. And this is the sum. Email subscribers divided by website visitors times by 100. As an example, if you had 200 website, uh, 200 subscribers a month and 10,000 visitors a month, 200 divided by 10,000 times by 100 gives you two. So it's, the answer would be 2%. So I'm not gonna ask anyone to share it, but I do wanna just give you a minute to try and like 30 seconds just to try and figure out what that number is so you know where you are at the moment. All right, it would be awesome. Anybody, if anybody's figured out, you don't have to share what the number is, but have you, have you been able to figure out that number, just jot it down in the chat box. If you have, just say yes. Help me to know that I'm, I'm uh, on track with everybody. All right, Dominic's got his figured out. Kenton, Frank. All right, at least some people are with me so far on all the sums. Claire and Rosemary, okay, cool, we're on track, this is good. So next step is, once you know what your number is, we're gonna compare that again to this. So you can kind of see where you are in the scheme of things. And if you've got a number, let's say you've got, you know, 1% at the moment or something. First thing to know is that's totally normal. Don't get like bothered about it. What it means is that you've got lots of opportunity to increase. And so I'm going to be showing you today how we got somebody from a certain level up to a much higher level and doubled their number. Um, but if you, if you are currently at a point where you've got, let's say, a 0.5%, if you implement everything I'm showing you, you could probably get to 5%, which means you can 10 times the results you're getting from it. So when I said two times to 10 times the results, that's what I was talking about. So I'm going to show you today how we helped someone get to 6.7%. So this is the best that we've ever seen um, in any of the funnels, any of the kind of uh, sites that I've been through. I think I've probably looked at about 100, 120 different people's um, option rates and all this kind of stuff. And so if you implement all of this stuff, I think you're going to be way ahead of the curve. So as a reminder, if you can get more email subscribers, you're going to get more profit. Well, how much more? Well, you take whatever you're making from email marketing at the moment, and you might not know that number, but if you do know that, if you do know how much you're getting, and if you double your leads, you're probably gonna get twice as much money, approximately. The world's not quite as simple as that, but something, something along those kind of lines. So let's get into the example of it. So example number one is Paintable. And Paintable is run, it's a, a site that is about how to um, become a better digital artist, a digital painter. And it's run by this guy. It is David Beliveau, and he's this awesome artist, and he's the co-founder and lead instructor over at Paintable. And he's a, he's a DCA, and he also was started as well by another DCA called Fabian, who some of you might know too. So I mentioned before that 2% was good and 5% was great. Well, David was already at this really good level. He already had 3.49% as his uh, opt-in rate. So we had quite a challenge to figure out if we can improve it further. He had 100 blog posts published. I'll come back to that a little bit later. He was getting 579 website subscribers and making just under 100 sales a month from it. So that's where we were starting from. Now, we'd already built the email marketing system for him. Uh, we'd set everything up, all the stuff that I showed you before, we'd set up the webinar funnel, we'd set up the tripwire funnel, the email follow-up, um, had all that in place. We'd helped him to have a $200,000 launch. So we've got all kinds of stuff really cranking. So the next challenge was, uh, so oh, and we'd nearly doubled his monthly recurring revenue from it as well. So that was all going awesome. We're delighted with that. The next goal was can we increase the number of leads, get more people coming through this. So there's a few steps we were going to go through to get there. 
And this is basically what I'm going to talk you through and what I suggest you focus on um, for your own site. So number one, improve the lead magnet. Number two, put the lead magnet in front of more people. And number three, minimize distractions. So this is not like terribly complex as a, as a concept, right? This is like, okay, everyone can get their head around this, have a better lead magnet, put the lead magnet in front of more people and minimize distractions. The devil's in the detail, so I'm going to talk you through what the, what the steps were that we went through. So improve the lead magnet. We wanted to have a custom lead magnet for the homepage. So this is what the homepage was like before. This is what was on there. Learn the art of digital paintings, the main headline, and then underneath, join our community and get our weekly free tutorials. And we didn't think that was compelling enough. We didn't think we're getting, we, well, we checked the numbers and we thought we could get a higher opt-in rate at this stage. So we thought that's not compelling enough. And we looked on digital marketers list of what makes a compelling lead magnet. And these are the things that they recommend. Something ultra specific, one big thing, speaks to a known desired end result, shifts the relationship, high perceived value, high actual value, immediate gratification and rapid consumption. So that is a hell of a list. That's a lot of stuff to try and get all in one go. Now we brainstormed ideas and we came up with like, what could that be? The problem was we, it was gonna take a load of time to create those new lead magnets. And we're like, okay, what could we do that would be more compelling than what we've got at the moment, but we could create quickly? So we actually looked at what was done by this dude. This is Christopher Sutton, another DCer. Uh, I'm in a mastermind with Christopher, and he runs a site called Musical You. And he had come up with this idea, and I'm not even sure how he came up with it exactly. If he got it from somewhere else, if he invented it himself. But basically what he did is he took his most popular articles and turned them into PDFs. So it's content that he already had rather than creating something new. So this is, here we go, here's one of his blog posts, Ultimate Guide to the Circle of Fifths. Circle of Fifths is some kind of a musical term. I don't really understand it. Anybody who plays the guitar probably has heard of it, um, or any musical instrument, I guess. And most people in music seem to not quite understand it. But it's quite important. Everyone knows it's quite important. So they've done this great article that really explains all about it. It's really long and it's detailed and it's awesome. And then the problem is that people don't necessarily have the time to finish reading the whole thing. So he's made this thing here, get your free download, get your free instant download of the PDF version of the guide now. So this is like a, a zoomed in version of that, that uh, lead magnet box that he's got on his website. Get your free instant download of the PDF version of this guide now, perfect to print or keep handy in digital form for reading and quick reference, plus get the one page cheat sheet. So he's taken that and he's turned it into a PDF. And I was like, okay, well, how did that do? Well, it doubled his opt-in rate on that page. And I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. So we had a look at that. Could we do something similar for Paintable? So here's what we did. We replaced the previous one that said about get, I think it's something like get, get a weekly resource or get a weekly tutorial or something. We tested out this one. Looking to level up as a digital artist, click the button below to join our newsletter and get 10 free tutorials and resources as a welcome gift. And we thought, let's test that and see how that one did. And it doesn't match all of digital marketers uh, list, but it did way better. So that hugely increased the opt-in rate that we had. Now what happens if you click on that, and this is really important as, an, as, a, as a step to understand, is if you click on it, it brings up a pop-up. So it doesn't take them to another page where they can go and get it, it's just a pop-up. And this seems to work really, really well. At, the, at least it, uh, it's worked really well for us in terms of increasing the, the opt-in rate. So same thing, join our newsletter and get 10 free tutorials and gifts. Another thing that's important to understand here is it's saying in here, join our newsletter. So there's not a second thing for them to, to tick in terms of like GDPR. It's saying the newsletter is the main thing and if they do that, then they get the gifts. Um, and this is like a, this is within the GDPR rules is that if you, you can't give them the gift and then you just sign up to the newsletter. But if you say join the newsletter and you get the gift, that's allowed. So they get that as soon as they sign up there. 
Another thing we've done here is we've just asked for the email address. It's not name and email, it's not first name, last name, email, it's not adding in all the kind of stuff that we don't need. We just need their email, so we ask them for that. Okay, so we've done the first step is we've improved the lead magnet. Now we already had some other lead magnets on other pages that were working quite well, but the problem with it was that they weren't in front of enough people. So step two was put the lead magnet in front of more people. Now what we did is we took this popular lead magnet, and I'll show it to you in a minute, and we added it to every popular blog post. So that's a crucial part of this, all the popular blog posts. We created pop-ups, we created inline sections, we created different ways for people to be able to sign up. I'll show you all of them. So like I said, we added it to every popular uh, blog post. And we wanted, to, we wanted to add it to every blog post. The problem is that they had uh, more than 100. So if you had 10 blog posts, it would be like, fine, let's just put it on all of them. It takes a bit of time, but it's not, it's not too bad with 10. With 100, it was, a, you know, it was a bit of a nightmare to add all of this stuff in. So we wanted to make a list of the most popular blog posts top to bottom. So the obvious way to do that is you go to Google Analytics. I'm going to show you how you would normally do this. So anybody who is set up on their blog in the right way will be able to do this. What you do is you go into Google Analytics. And this is the regular Google Analytics interface. You click on this bit here where it says behavior. And then that's going to open up a drop down, and you're going to see site content. And you click on site content, and it's going to show you all pages as one of the options. Click on that. And now it shows you a chart that looks like this. And this is like your content over a certain period of time. You change the date to be a long period of time. So last year, two years, what have you. You go to this box here, and you write in there slash blog. So if your blog posts, are all at a page that is, you know, website.com slash blog slash blog post name, then just by writing in here slash blog, it's going to only show the URLs that have got uh, slash blog in them. And therefore, you're only going to see the blog posts. That sounds great. It's not too complicated. You could put them in order of number of page views, top to bottom. You just click on the, the little arrow here and it'll do it top to bottom. And you're going to see what's the most popular. So that's how it would be in an ideal world. Unfortunately, we don't live in this ideal world, so we didn't have that situation. So we had the blog post weren't indexed in that way. It didn't go slash, uh, this is wrong way around, slash parent, slash child, page structure. They all had a different URL. It was paintable.cc slash something or other. And we had this other problem where some of the blog posts had different names depending on um, what, uh, where it where they'd come from it was kind of set up in some confusing way so it was going to take there was like millions of views or hundreds of thousands of views we had this crazy data set it had Yosef tells me it had 197,000 data points in it we couldn't do it through Google Analytics so I'm going to show you what we did this is something where I don't fully understand it I've got this Excel wizard in my team called Yosef but I'm going to show it in case it's useful um, for you to be able to do it for yourself so we did a custom VLOOKUP analysis. So we downloaded all of the data, and this is the VLOOKUP function that it used. Okay, you'll get the recording of this. If this is helpful to you and you can use it, then this is gonna allow you to be able to, to figure out you know, which of them, which uh, posts are the most popular. I cannot explain this part to you, and Yosef's not on the call. So I'm just gonna have to hand this over, and you can ask us uh, some point afterwards if you're in a similar situation, and I will. Uh, connect you with the OCP and help you out with it. Um, so he did some clever stuff. That's great. We now had a list of blog posts from the most to the least popular. So what did we do? We started at the most popular one and worked our way down the list. Whole classic 80-20. The top 20 most popular ones are going to have 80% of the traffic. So we're going to get the huge majority of results just by doing those. And then over time, we did work through the rest of the list. So Changes that we made, we added two different pop-ups, depends what page you're on as to what you're seeing, and we added inline buttons and sections across all of those blog posts one at a time, with three different versions of the inline buttons and sections. I will show you what that means, because you might be thinking that's all kind of gobbledygook. So here is one of the buttons. 
And these arrows that are on the screen, these were actually included in the, um, in the, the blog post. So you actually had these arrows pointing at the, at the button. So it's a basic version of a button. It opens up a pop-up and we added this across the blog post. So it's a nice clear call to action saying you can get these free brushes. Um, and crucially, like I mentioned before, you don't get navigated off the blog post. It just brings up that pop-up. I'm going to see if I can open this up to actually show you it live on this page. So we're going to go to this page here. This should hopefully open. And there you go. You should be able to see that now. Um, I just want to double check. Can people just say if they can see the Paintable website now, can you just put yes into the chat box so I know that that's sharing properly? I think I've shared screen the right way. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Martin. Okay, so this is one of the blog posts. If we scroll down here, this is, uh, I love this picture. That's so cool. Um, if you, we scroll down through this, there's a whole load of examples of paintings that people have done. And then at some point we're going to get, here we go. This is the pop-up. Or well, this is the button. So as you can see, the arrows are actually on the page. You click on there and it brings up the pop-up. Join the newsletter and get the 28 free portrait brushes. So that is the second one. Um, right, the next one, inline section. This is what these types of um, promotions are known as. I think this is like uh, the exact terminology is taken from the Elemental Pro, this is what they call it. So this section uh, is the best performing graphic section that we had. It gives a visual overview of what they can get. The features down here, realistic skin textures, etc., is all clearly visible. The call to action um, is nice and clear as well, opens up a pop-up. So again, like I said, it doesn't take them off the blog, it's just a pop-up. So here's another example for that one. This is one of their blog posts. I'm gonna open that up on their site. Okay, rendering of a poison bottle. So if we scroll down through this, we're gonna see, here we go. Here's that example of it. So it's actually what's crucial here, and I, I don't know if I've emphasized this enough yet, is it's within the blog post. Every blog post has got these in the middle of them. So you're going through, you're reading the blog, and you see this as one of the options of something that you can do. So it's kind of interrupting you partway through, or in this case, it's at the end, because this one was a video. And that means that everybody sees them because it's in the middle of the blog post. It's like you've got everyone's attention, they're reading through, and then they see this. So this gets in front of way more people's eyes. If it's a really long post, we might have a couple of these things in there, one halfway through, one at the end. Okay, so next one to show you is, here we go. Uh, 28 must have free brushes for painting, incredible portrait details, click here to download, and then it's got a bit more of an explanation about it. So there's different versions of the same thing, which means that we can have that on different posts. Um, we can have a couple of them in the same post. If people have seen the one before and they're kind of like, you know, blind to it because they've seen that one before, they see a different version of it. So all of these different versions made it more likely that somebody was going to sign up. We're kind of getting it in front of people's eyes more in slightly different ways. Um, and this one's actually, I didn't find an example of what page this is on, but this is actually animated as well. So I think this, um, this section here with the bit here, like actually animates and captures their attention. So it really kind of jumps out at them. Okay, so all of those open this pop-up like I showed you before. Um, and that's now added, oh, so it's taken a little while now, but that's been added to 100 blog posts. Like I said, started with the most popular, worked our way through it, and all new blog posts get that as well. And like I mentioned before, for GDPR, what's crucial is that this one also says join the newsletter. So this is two different steps we've gone through now. Improve the lead magnet and get the lead magnet in front of more people. Third step was minimize distractions. So how did we do that? removed all of the other links. There was a whole bunch of other stuff we were, that was getting mentioned on the page. There was stuff about joining the, what, uh, the YouTube channel. There was promotion of some of their products. There was all kinds of things going on. And that seems great because those are all things we'd like people to do, but it meant that actually people, because they had too many options, ended up doing nothing. So there's a, um, 
I'm sorry, I noticed there were some questions that just distracted me for a sec. But yeah, cool. Keep putting the questions in, guys, and we'll come back to those at the end. I've got a couple of the guys from my team on who are more likely to know some of the answers of the detail parts. But yes, please put the questions in and we'll, we'll answer all of those later. So, um, yeah, there's a saying in sales and marketing, uh, a confused customer never buys. So if we have too many things and we're not making it clear to people what they should do next, they'll end up doing nothing. So we just had one call to action per page. And I had, <laughs> I was going through this with uh, another DC recently, she was doing some coaching for it. And she had some emails that weren't performing very well. And uh, we just, I just had to keep hammering because she had every offer available in every email. And it's just like, this is not working. One call to action per email, one call to action per page, one call to action per whatever you are doing. So it's crucially important, just simplify it right down and say to people, this is what you should do next. And you will get a lot more people doing that thing. Um, but we had multiple call to action buttons that were going to that same, that's this the same thing that we want them to do, but different buttons leading to it, which was the download the lead magnet brushes. And then, like I said, we reduce distraction, make the, the, the opt-in really simple, make it look really clear and neat, make sure you get rid of the confusion, get rid of the YouTube links, get rid of the links to the, your, your products, all that kind of thing. So what's the results of all of this? So they were at 3.49% before, afterwards they're at 6.7%. Uh, number of new leads a month went from about 2,400 to 5,300. What does that mean in terms of revenue? This is an approximation because we did that like a month ago. So we can't say this for definite, but from my calculations, I reckon it's going to be worth a few hundred thousand a year. If we can double the email list from this, we can double the size of the, the promotions that we're doing, double the size of the launches. So this is like an approximation, but I reckon it's about right. So that is hugely important, hugely valuable. But we are not finished. So I'm going to talk you through what else we're planning on doing that I think is also going to increase the opt-ins further. So number one is an exit intent pop-up. We haven't got that in place at the moment. And if you don't know, an exit intent is you, when you're going up on the screen, I think you can see my cursor. If you go up on the screen towards the X to close the bit of the browser, to close the browser tab, then it pops up with something saying, wait before you go, and it has some really good offer for them at that point. So that's the next one we're gonna do. And then creating unique lead magnets for the most popular blog posts. So what we'll do again is an analysis of what blog posts have got a lot of traffic, but haven't got that high of an opt-in rate? Where is these opt-ins not converting? And then we're going to create, um, yeah. So we're going to create, sorry, I'm just going to close, I'm going to minimize the chat box for a moment. Um, we're going to create unique lead magnets for each of those different pages so that, um, so that we can increase those further. And this is that thing that I was saying Christopher Sutton did, he took his like 10 most popular blog posts and created unique lead magnets for each of those and actually managed to increase the conversion rate on each or nearly all of them, I think eight out of 10. So we're gonna to look to do the same thing as well. So example two, so we were like, okay, this is awesome. This is fantastic. Can we replicate this and do the same thing again for somebody else? So in April, we started work doing the same thing for another client. So this is Plan Your Federal Retirement, um, and they help US federal employees to prepare for their retirement. It's run by this DC here, Micah, and he's a certified financial planner. He's a professional who specializes in helping federal employees to get the most out of their federal retirement benefits. And his website address is planyourfederalretirement.com, which is this site here. Um, and the place that he was at, he had 50 useful content pages and he had a 1.7% opt-in rate. So actually pretty strong. You know, like I said, 2% is good. Um, I don't often see people who are at 2% and he was at 1.7. So it's like, okay, this is pretty cool. But um, weekly subscribers only 35. So we wanted to get that up. So here's the numbers before the optimization. It was kind of ranging. I think I've got this as a chart later as well. 1.5%, we had one week when for some reason it went down to 0.5% as well. That's the kind of range he was at before. So the goal was, can we improve the site opt-in rate? Again, improve the lead magnet, make it really appealing, get it in front of people, make it easy to opt in, reduce the distractions. Um, I've not got as much detail on this one because we've got like a, there's not enough time to go through everything so much for here. But changes we made, added the lead magnet to every popular page on the site. What he had before was 
um, newsletter opt-in. So this is the most common one that I see. It's sign up uh, for, to get our newsletter and there's no actual lead magnet that goes with it. Or sometimes people have got a lead magnet, but then the, the newsletter opt-in is, is um, the most common one they have on most pages. And that tends to get of like a 0.5 to 1% opt-in rate. Here it was getting slightly higher. But he, so we worked with them to create a lead magnet and then we opt, added that to the most popular blog posts and then worked our way through the list. Same like I said for Paintful as well. Um, created a new lead magnet landing page because the previous one didn't look awesome. Simplified that, made a better design, introduced another lead magnet. So we had different ones in different places. So people have different options of what to opt in for. Uh, we've got a couple of new lead magnets in the pipeline at the moment. Minimized distractions. So we created a sidebar opt-in um, and a graphic to end every blog post with that were nice and straightforward. Got rid of any other calls to action beside opting in. This is what we found is that if we had these other things like, you know, go buy the product now, it just wasn't converting. So we needed to get people on the email list in order to send them the emails to convert them later to warm them up. Um, and we created a pop-up instead of the form field. Like I said before, that's worked really, really well. So this is, we went through, we did the analysis of like, what's the most popular pages on the site um, from Google Analytics, figured out what's, what pages are gonna have the most, be worth doing uh, first. And then this is the lead magnet that it, they had before. So sign up for the monthly easy newsletter and then email first name, last name, that's what we had before. And this is what it's got changed to. So this is the new uh, pop-up. Actually, we have asked for name and, and email, uh, first name, last name here. So that's quite interesting. I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to ask the team why we changed that one. But we made this um, much more appealing because they get this workshop. So this is the uh, this is the lead magnet, the three critical concepts workshop. Super appealing, really great value. We explain more detail about it here so people can get signed up for it. Uh, once they opt in, they're being redirected to this introductory landing page explaining what the workshop's about. They can then navigate to the first video from the intro page so they can go straight to here. Or the email sequence then points them back there again. And so the main reason that we brought the lead magnet in was to increase the, the opt-in rate. They've got a problem, they're looking for an answer, but maybe the newsletter is just not appealing enough. So we found these lead, you know, having a lead magnet is the crucial first step. If you've just got, you know, newsletter sign up, then replace it with a, get and figure out a lead magnet, figure out something that's appealing um, for your audience. We also introduced, so in the, in the theme of um, trying to get it in front of more people, we did a site-wide pop-up. So this again goes to the same, uh, a different way of showing that offer, the lead magnet to more people. And a sidebar banner. So in the blog, there's the main blog and then down the side, there's a sidebar. So we put this, um, this is like the little graphic we put in there. If you click that, it brings up the pop-up. And at the bottom of the page, we had a form inviting people to every page that they went to, they would, or the blog post that had this, they could sign up at the bottom and made a dedicated landing page for the lead magnet as well. So it's kind of linked to from a couple of places where it goes to the landing page instead of the pop-up. So a bunch of different ways to get them opted in to the same thing. So this is the results we got from that one. Uh, the opt-in rate, like you can see, was kind of ticking along just under 2%. Something broke, it, I think, and uh, the opt-in rate went down, and that's when we started working on it. Got it back up, got that thing fixed, and then got it up to, like I said, 3.37%. So this is, as you can see, like every week, there was another thing being improved every week. So the opt-in rate kept going up week to week. Uh, so before, we had 1.7%. After 3.3%, which about doubles the number of leads. Uh, yes, just, that's just under double. And my approximation, like I said, this is an approximation because we haven't gone through, we haven't enough time to see the results, but it's worth about another 100,000 a year to them. So the next steps, what else are we gonna do? We're introducing other lead magnets. And the idea here is you've got a lead magnet that appeals to a whole group of people, they sign up for it. Then you've got other people who that doesn't appeal to, but there's a different angle, a different hook that we can use, something else they'll be interested in. Uh, this is the retirement timeline. So um, the idea is that if people are planning on retiring in the next 90 days, they're the hottest leads for him. There's not that big of a percentage who are in that uh, category. 
but they are the hottest leads and so we want to have something that's specifically for them so they click this and it takes them to this page here and this is much more like in line with all the stuff i said from digital marketer it's instantly consumable there's a clear benefit it's really specific to a specific type of audience so that's kind of we think that's going to work really well what else um that leads part of that they get this timeline graphic of what's the steps that they go through in the next 90 days or the 90 days around the time and um this is the pdf version they're going to get through from that as well and then i think that is everything how long have we been 35 minutes awesome okay let's move over to q and a i see that i'm going to stop sharing screen and I saw that there were some questions people had had already. So let's pull those up. Okay. So, uh, da, da, da. Chris Reynolds, button color. All right, cool. Where's Chris? Uh, I'm trying to see if I can see him on the page. Uh, there he is. Hey, Chris. Unmute Chris. All right. Hey, hey. Matt, you're right. Yes, yeah, good to see you, buddy. Uh, I don't think we have ever tested button color, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter all that much. Vlad is on the call as well, though, uh, and Vlad's the one who's done. I'm talking about this as we. I didn't do this work. Vlad did this work. So Vlad is the man on this one. He, he gets to take all the credit. Uh, Vlad, have you ever tested button colors? Have we ever done that? Um, no, it's not really that important. What's the most important when you're uh, looking for a bright color is to have contrast with your page or with your website. So to if your what? website is, sorry? To have what? With the page? Uh, contrast between contrast. colors. Okay. So if your website's theme is, let's say, green, and you're also throwing a green button in there, it's going to get lost. So yeah, the way to go is just... Uh, Look what what has the best contrast with your your team. Okay, cool, good to know. Thank you. Sure. All right, John Vishnesky. John, can you wave? Where are you? Oh, there he is. I see him. Hey, John. All right, cool. Uh, what pop up do you recommend for blog? Can you talk me through what do you mean by that one? Yeah. So um, I guess like if you're using like a WordPress blog, I guess uh, these are like on WordPress blogs. I'm guessing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I, I do like pop-ups on like my, my funnels and like click funnels, but I guess if I'm using like a client's like blog, like what do you suggest for like dropping that inside there? So is there, is there one that you found that works really well or? Yeah. Vlad, can you answer that one? Uh, you're talking about the tool? Yeah. Is for it... like a WordPress blog, I guess. Is that what these are on? Yeah. So Elementor uh, works best. It's the easiest, easiest to use and has the best features. What is it called? Elementor. Elementor? Oh, okay. Is, Vlad, is that, with Elementor, like if you're not using the theme, can you do, can you use any of the other tools from them, the pop-ups, or do you have to be using the Elementor theme to be able to use those pop-ups? I'm not sure about this. Uh, okay. you, should be, you should be able to, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I think that's like a, it's a, it's a builder, right? It's like, a, like a, a WordPress site builder, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think any of my clients are on that, but um, I've, heard, I've heard good things about it though. Yeah. Yeah, it's the and, best builder. Uh, sorry, go on, Vlad. It's the best builder and it should let you build a pop-up no matter what team you're using behind it. Okay, cool. Sweet. Uh, Bruno, Bruno, where are you? I can't see you at the moment. Ah, I think I see yeah. There he is. Hey, Bruno, cool. Uh, How's it going? It's good, man. How are you? Good as well. Cool. Could you ask the question uh, so everyone can hear what, what you were um, asking about? I think it's a really good point. Yeah. So, because uh, a lot of people assume that if you double your opt-in rates, you also double your sales. But my question was, if in your experience, or I don't know if you have any dates on that, uh, how much lower quality are these extra leads? Because my assumption is people who are very high quality leads will pretty much join anyway like and and then these extra people might still buy but buy at a lower rate but it's just an assumption i don't know if it happens in practice yeah we haven't got the data yet we are going to be keeping an eye on that strike but i'm almost sure you are right this is why when mm -hmm. i put that thing at the beginning saying you know you double your lead you double your profit and i put at the bottom approximately because it's like 
it's yeah, probably yeah. not that, but it's like as a rule of thumb, as a starting point, it definitely goes up, you know. But yeah, you, yeah. I mean, the hottest leads, the one who like the ones who are going to fight through whatever you put in their way to get in, in touch and sign up at the moment, they're more likely to then convert at the next stage. So yeah, but I don't know. I don't know the number. Vlad, do you know anything on that one? Uh, no, but what I've noticed is that uh, the revenue for Paintable mm -hmm. has grown along with the leads. Oh, it has gone up? At the same proportion. Yeah, but it depends on a lot of things. First of all, uh, you need quality content overall. So it's a good match to your audience. And the yeah. emails you're sending them after are really important. If you're just yeah, building sure. a list and emailing it once a month, you can build a 200,000, I don't know, list, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you'll have to, to offer them relevant and quality content. And that way you're making them uh, quality leads, even if at the beginning they're not. Huh. Well, yeah. Nice. Um, I'm really sorry if this next guy, if I butcher your name, is it? Thanks, John. Jao, uh, Jao May or Joe? I'm just really sorry. I'm unmuting. Uh, uh, hi, Jao May. Yeah. Jao May. Cool. Hey, there, man. You good? Thank you. Yeah, great. Great. Pleasure meeting you. You too, man. Uh, right. Did you ask your question out so everyone can hear it? Sure. Um, so you mentioned that for some uh, pages, you'd want to do like a specific mm -hmm. lead magnet there. Yeah. So, so the question was whether the lead magnet is, is just your general lead magnet that you're doing and you're just doing like a little different button or call to action or whether you're doing a, um, a lead magnet that's specific to the content of that page. Yeah, so actually specific to the content of that page. So, and the, the way that was working was, remember that one I was showing from Christopher Sutton from Musical U, what he actually mm -hmm. did is every one of those pages, we took the general idea of taking the PDF of different articles. What he actually did is he took a PDF, so let's say you're on the Circle of Fifths blog post, yeah. he, makes a blog, he makes a PDF of the Circle of Fifths uh, blog post, and mm -hmm. then he offers that as the opt-in. He makes that specifically the lead magnet. Okay. And then he's got a different blog post that's on a different topic. He has the PDF of that article as the opt-in. And on average, it doubled the opt-in rate for every one of those versus having his site-wide uh, opt-in. So his site-wide opt-in is a musicality checklist. He kept that in the sidebar. I think, I'm not sure, I think he kept it as the um, exit pop-up, but the inline sign up and the and the the you know you've been on the site for 30 seconds or whatever pop up he changed to be that the pdf of that particular article because then it's completely tailored to that that audience mm -hmm. um they're on the circle of fifth page they're interested in that it interestingly it didn't work on every single page but it worked on eight out of ten or six out of eight or i forget the exact but it's like a lot of them you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's something where it doesn't take that much extra time to create it. It is some design work because you want it to look a bit nice in there, but like um, it's it's not like creating a whole new thing from scratch. Right. So so it is basically the same content. You just repackage it in a in a PDF format with a little with a little bit of graphics and embellishments, and off you go. Yeah, it feels like cheating, right? It's like well, that comes fine when like you almost... something. You're already on the blog post. It's like you're already here. But they do, you know. Oh, hey, human psychology, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers, mate. No worries. Uh, Shana, uh, where's Shana? Can you unmute yourself? There she is. Sure. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, what is your question? Similar to uh, Bruno's uh, about uh, extra leads being low quality, kind of a follow up on that, being in a niche with a lot of people who are just looking to collect free stuff. Um, I'm wondering if there are ways to kind of gear lead magnets towards people with buying intent as opposed to just a freebie seekers. Like for my niche, I was thinking something like uh, download a free sample from one of my paid courses, which is more like directly in line with 
uh, revenue generating or something that a customer would be interested in as opposed to just some random download this checklist or list of phrases or whatever. Um, any thoughts about that? Just uh, the type of lead magnet as, as related to someone's uh, buying intent as opposed to just a tire kicker? That is an awesome question and I don't have a good answer for it. I'm going to try and see if I can think of something, but like, I don't know if this is, so I tell you what we do, right? One of the, one of the approaches we use is we sometimes will, something you mentioned there is we'll splinter out something from one of the, from the tripwire. Like, you know, we've talked about this before, right? You have the main product and you splinter out a tripwire from that. And then you take something from the tripwire and splinter it out. And the reason we do that is to try and make the, the, the process of buying seamless. So the people who... Right, as congruent as possible, right? Exactly, yeah. So anybody who buy, who downloads that is more likely to want the full version, which is, a, you know, slightly more full version of the tripwire and the really full version of the main course. So that's the closest I think that we get to that. I've never looked at and think at like, which of these things align with people with buying intent beyond that. Vlad, have you got any thoughts on that one? Have you ever thought about that? I think we'd be millionaires if we'd had the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> you think yeah. that's a great oh, one if we could figure it out? Yeah, it sounds pretty hard to do. I mean, that's the main reason why uh, your open rates are not, uh, why your open rates are not 100%. Because most of the people uh, will be there just for the free stuff. So in this case, the lift magnet. and. I can see, and I didn't find yet, a uh, way to filter them out. Mm. That's the way it works. Yeah, like as a, I, I, need, I really want to do some research on this. So I was asking some people about it the other day and I couldn't find an answer. But like what percentage of people on your email list ever buy? And I think it's like something like 5%, maybe 10% if you absolutely crush it. And most people it's probably like, two, three percent, one percent, something in that kind of ballpark. So it does mean that nearly everybody isn't going to get anything from you ever. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a tricky one. But if you can get it from three to five, then you know you've absolutely you you've completely revolutionized your business. Um, okay. Claire and Rosemary, I don't know which one of Claire and Rosemary is on. Could you oh, I see you on the page in a minute. I'm unmute uh, where are you? Here we are. How are you doing? Hi, Dana. Hi, it's both. <laughs> How are you guys doing? You good? Good, good, good. Yeah, good, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, what's your question? So the, the question is about creating a league magnet. You know, as you mentioned, it, it takes a lot of time to create a new league magnet. And um, how do you, is there a way to test before you create a full lead magnet? Or if, and, and then, you know, once, once you test it, you say, okay, this is what people want. Uh, then I can develop, you know, the full, full lead magnet. Or do you need to know ahead of time? So how do you um, not guess, but analyze what's gonna be the best lead magnet? Um, for for the pages people are on. Yeah. That, and the the okay. reason I'm asking this question is um, we have a blog in food and travel. Mm -hmm. So we write about local food at different travel destinations. So people, we have travelers and we have food lovers. And um, not everything converts the way we want. <laughs> right. uh, so we should have a, a you know, lean magnet about food or link my net about travel? That's the question. So yeah. what you're kind of asking is, could you do like a, a, a test in advance before you make it? And it's kind of like pre-selling a course or something, right? It's like you, right. yeah. before, you before you build the course, you, you pre-sell it. That's like what we always recommend to people. That is a fascinating idea. It's like you totally could do it. I never have done it, but you totally could. You could put like a, um, uh, you could put the pop up or you could put the opt in on one, you know, one page that you're thinking about building it for and then see how many people opt in and then it takes them to like an error page or something like that afterwards and you just test it for a few days and you see what's the conversion rate on it. And they get there and you go, oh, sorry, we, you know, there's been a mistake, we haven't built this yet or whatever, you know, you put on that page. And because they're not paying any money, it's definitely not breaking any laws. 
it would annoy a few people for a week when they opt in. And you, or you could say, we're building this, it's not ready, we'll send it to you in two weeks or something like that. You know, that might be even less, less annoying for people. Is that worth doing? It probably, yeah, for lead magnets, it's going to take a lot of time. It could be really worth doing, couldn't it? Like if you've got three you're thinking of and you kind of test them out, that is a fan fascinating idea. I will let you know if we do it as well, but I, I haven't done it, but I think it would definitely work. Hmm. Yeah. And, and so for, for your um, customer, when you went from a magnet that was not working to something that was improved, what, what was the methodology behind that? Of how did you design that new magnet um, that converted much better? Yeah. Vlad, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, it's mostly based on data. So if you already have a website, some traffic to it, uh, or not even a website, if you have a YouTube channel, let's say, um, you can look at data and see what people are most interested in when it comes to your content. And based on that, you can build a lead magnet. So for example, for the guys uh, we've talked about before for Paintable, it's pretty clear that their audience, which are digital painters, would be interested in uh, brushes, in digital brushes. But again, we've also looked at data. They had a lot of data, um, a lot of visitors. And based on that, again, you can see what uh, content is the most relatable to your audience. Then you can splinter something off uh, from there and create a lead magnet based on it. That's an alternative to your testing idea, which I also believe is pretty great. Okay. Just one quick question, John. On the paintables analysis, why didn't you just look from Google Analytics the top performing posts? Post with the most traffic rather than going into the complicated formula that you share? Yeah, I think, and Vlad, you maybe can answer this one better than me, but like I was, uh, I think what basically happened is that different blog, the same blog post would have different titles. And so it kind of got like categorized all differently. Vlad, did you, did you, I didn't totally understand all of that stuff that you guys put in. Could you explain that one? Uh, yeah, so if you simply want to see what blog posts are getting the most traffic, yeah, it's enough just looking at the 20 most visited. But we mostly did that for tracking. Uh, we did the number of visits, which blog post, and uh, the opt-in rates. So it was mostly for tracking. And again, because each blog post had a different URL, uh, it was pretty much the only way to do it. So we had to come up with an Excel function and that way we can we could track opt-in rates for those blog posts. Um, oh, it's so opt-in rates. It was, so it was like most popular ones that had a low opt-in rate or something like that? Yeah, so if you, want, if you want to just see the most popular, oh, no, sorry, I was uh, a little bit ahead. Yeah, it's because um, we couldn't see just the blog posts in that Google Analytics report because he didn't have um, a structure like paintable.com slash blog slash uh, blog name. He just had the full URL for each blog. And that way you can uh, exactly see when you have hundreds of pages, you can see uh, which ones are the most, uh, which are performing the best. All right, cool. So we need what, yeah, we need the kind of filter. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's see who is next. Okay, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So we've got a bunch more questions. I'm gonna, we're gonna stay on, we're gonna answer all of them, but just in case anybody needs to, um, to dash before the hour is up, I'm gonna just share my screen again and just kind of finish up. I said that I would explain, uh, cause I always get at the end of this, I get like a, uh, questions about, this sounds cool, but like, it sounds quite tricky uh, to implement everything. So the reactions I normally get when I get to this stage are, it sounds amazing, but it looks like a lot of work. And the reason it looks like a lot of work is because it's a lot of work. Um, if you just want someone to do it for you, this is like our, you know, uh, 
one minute pitch is like, here's how we can help. We can basically, we offer white glove service. We can do all of this stuff, improve all the opt-in. This is, we do it specifically for online course businesses. So if that's not you, this isn't appropriate, but um, convert more of your visitors to leads, convert more leads to sales. Uh, typically this is the kind of results that we're getting with people. So this is like uh, Zenmade, another DC. Uh, this is the results we've got kind of business is monthly revenue. You can see we're uh, scrolling up towards a million. And then this is with Paintable. This is the revenue that's gone up kind of over time, weekly revenue every week. So if you want help with it, then just drop us an email. Uh, my email is john at datadrivenmarketing.co or just message me on the DC. So anybody who you're like, okay, that's it. I'm out of time. It's all good. We can um, thank you very much for coming on. But otherwise, we're going to carry on the Q&A now. So who else was um, next? Da, da, da. Okay, I'm Rosemary. Uh, Dan, Dan Johnston. Yeah, hey, thanks, John. Uh, by the way, that part about looking at your most popular blog posts and YouTube videos to decide on lead magnets is so obvious in retrospect, but purely genius. <laughs> I would never have thought about that. Um, <laughs> So I'm wondering about what data to collect. I am not a data collecting guy. It's just, I want to, I see the value. I'm just terrible at implementing. So what are the key, obviously total visitors and opt-ins, but are there other key data points that I should be tracking? Okay. For your whole business, or do you mean just about like with Ideally for the funnel overall, but if you just want to focus on the email opt-in side, that's fine too. Okay. I'm trying to think of the, uh, what I could share with everybody because I can't share any of our clients ones, but I want to show you one of our, uh, Vlad, what about with our um, KPI tracking spreadsheet? Is that something that kind of would be start tracking this level of stuff for ourselves yet? Yeah, but the uh, with that spreadsheet we have now, it's like, well, we have two rows <laughs> the last two weeks. Ago. Yeah, but I think we could show what the columns are, couldn't we? What's the okay. folder that that's in? Uh, or would you find the file and would you paste that into uh, the chat box and then I can open it and show everybody? Sure. Um, yes. I'll start talking through it down though. What we like to do is, can is track every step in the funnel. So uh, we've got a very specific KPI spreadsheet that we use for this. Um, and what you basically do is you start off with number of visitors and then next column is conversion percentage. And then the column after that is number of people who've opted into your email list. So the conversion percentage just calculates once you fill in the other two numbers, what percentage opted in. And then you have whatever the next step in the funnel is. For us, we often start with a tripwire funnel. So it'd be like number of people who opted in who then bought the tripwire, the kind of the cheap first product you have available. So we kind of track every step throughout that logically as the, as the user would go through it. Um, so that's like our main, our main thing that we're tracking. And I'll show you an example in a, in a minute. Uh, Shona has recently implemented one of our KPI tracking spreadsheets after I've been on at her for a while about it. And, uh, Shona, could you, oh, I've got the, the sheet now, so I can actually share screen, but I might ask you to um, kind of talk down through how that's going to be for you in a minute. Share the screen. Yeah, it's not the most detailed thing we've got, but. It might give the idea of it at least, might it? Uh, that's not the right login, that's the problem. I don't think I'm going to show anybody my password here. No, okay, cool. So yeah, total subscribers. What have we got here? Yeah, unique users, unique page views, people to specific um, specific articles. It looks like blog post and revenue simulator. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got basically a bunch of different uh, types of pe uh, traffic pages, like pages that are getting traffic. And then how many subscribers we got and what's the conversion rate? And then how many people get to the next stage and what's the conversion rate for that? So basically same but that principle, but we normally do this in a lot more, a lot more detail. Um, I can send you through an example afterwards, Dan, 
Um, if you drop us a message on the, in fact, I might just make, send that through to everybody that might be useful. Um, Anna, if you're still on, would you make a note for us to send that through to, to people afterwards? Cool, thanks. Does that kind of answer your question, Dan? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. No, what's up, dude? Hey, John, how you doing, you good? Good, man. Thanks very much, this is really good, really, really helpful. So the question I had was about, so I was recommended recently, because I had some really ugly lead magnets, to a tool called beacon.by, which makes really cool looking lead magnets. Um, but it kind of, you don't get a real PDF, it's like a smart PDF they can go to. Any experience kind of, is it all right to use things like that? Or is, it, is there kind of some real downsides to, to doing so as a, as a shortcut? So it's the lead magnet itself that looks bad is the point. Okay. Well, my existing ones did. And then so it, it's kind of just, they've got tons of templates. So you just type or copy your text in and it just makes it look like a polished lead magnet. Sounds fine to me. What do you reckon, Vlad? We haven't used this kind of tools before. We just built it ourselves. But I can, at the moment, I can't see any downside to it. Okay, cool. As nice. long as it's working, I mean, should be fine. I mean, technically working, it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, you want with the lead magnets, it's, you need something where um, people can consume it ideally quite quickly. So nothing that's too huge and long and complicated anyway. So if they don't have access to it, like two months later, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's supposed to be something they do. They get it, they use it, and they kind of move on. It's like, great if they do. I don't know if if that's something you're concerned about because it's not a proper PDF that they won't have access to it or? No, no, not really. It's just like you said, it's, it, most people are going to discard it and move on and buy stuff and hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get that lead magnet. <laughs> cool, okay, thanks man. No worries. Martin. Hey, how you doing? You good, you all right? Yeah, yeah, thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. No worries. Um, yeah, so, so I use Squarespace on my website, and um, it's got a built-in pop-up tool that you can mm -hmm. configure pages. Uh, but one of the downsides of it is that you can't track how many people actually see the, the pop-up. Um, now, I know there are sort of tools out there. I think I can do it with ConvertKit, actually do a custom pop-up that doesn't use the Squarespace inbuilt thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but my question is, um, do you have any benchmarks around what sort of percentage of people should be opting in once they've seen the pop-up? Um, and uh, what, what tools are you using for that kind of thing? Yeah, so you mean instead of like just what's the site-wide um, opt-in, like specifically what's the pop-up opt-in rate? Yeah, yeah, so people, so people are obviously interested in the lead magnet, they click on it, but still some people won't necessarily fill it in. Um, are there any benchmarks around that, do you know? I don't think I do specifically for pop-ups. I think it's quite low because each of these on their own is quite low and you kind of add them together and you get to the, the three, five, six, seven percent. Vlad, do you know for pop-ups specifically? Uh, I think we could find some benchmarks. And I also think you can track it um, depending on what, uh, what builder or software you're using. It could be easy, uh, depending on the tools they're offering, but normally it would require some some level of coding to be able to track this kind of thing. Um, maybe through Google Tag Manager, it would be easier, but it's still um, still pretty complicated. I bet you in ConvertKit is one, like you say, that it would give you that number because that's like a specific, or yeah, any any one that you you pay for separately and like um, use their use their code is going to tell you the number because they want you to know how you know how high it is as opposed to Squarespace is just built in. Squarespace's focus is about how do we make it easy to build websites, isn't it? Not how do we. Yeah. Um, Someone's saying, Bruno's saying, ConvertKit, you can see how many times the form is seen. If the form only appears when the pop-up shows up, you can use that number. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be even more useful for exit pop-ups, isn't it? I suppose. You're not, you don't have any other metric. Whereas with a, with a click button, you've got a starting metric, which is how many people clicked on it. Um, but with just an exit pop-up, you don't really have a starting metric to, to try to understand 
yeah. what the what the opt-in rate is for people leaving the page you know yeah you need some kind of code uh, that tells you when the pop-up is triggered and how how many times people have signed up through that single pop-up it's more of an advanced kind of tracking but about the benchmarks, I think there are uh, some benchmarks available online about this. I think I've read about it. I have to take a look. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, da, da, da. Here we go. I think that is all of the questions. Anybody else has got any more questions, then please unmute yourself, shout out now. I'm going to take that as a no. All right. Hey oh, hello. Who's Sorry. I, I have one more thing I was going to say. Um, where are you dropping the tripwire in? Is it kind of coming in on like the thank you page of the uh, yeah. the magnet, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's hugely important. Yeah. So um, the confirmation page, anyone who's seen my talk is, hears me talk about how confirmation pages are magic. So after someone opts in for the lead magnet, we straight away show them the next thing for them to get, which normally for us is a tripwire. So the um, tripwire is like a, a cheap initial product. If you're doing B2C, it's like $17, $27, something like that. B2B, it might be a little bit more expensive. It's something where it's a no brainer, where someone can buy it and if they don't think it's any good, they don't feel any shame that they wasted that much money because they're like, ah, fuck it, it's only 17 bucks. And so it's, you put that tripwire on the confirmation page immediately after somebody signed up. I think, Shona, do you remember what percentage you've got converting buying that on your, your confirmation page? You set that up recently, didn't you? I did. Um, it's like three? I think, I think. no, it's... Because you, you were at like 0 0.2 and then we went, oh no, it was up to 1%, wasn't it? It got up to 1%. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right, that's right. And that's uh, what's, normal, what's the like one to three percent. I think, Vlad, what's that one we did for someone the other day that got up to like it looked like maybe three percent? Um, which one are you talking Principal about? One, I think, didn't that get the three percent? Oh, uh, yeah, that was the top, I guess. Yeah, okay, so somewhere in that kind of range, one to three. Yeah. So it's like it's the tripwire itself isn't going to make. John, I know you kind of might know this stuff, but just explaining for everybody, like the tripwire is not going to make you a ton of money, but it makes you a customer. And um, Shana did an awesome episode of uh, Entrepreneurs in Motion, the podcast she does, where she was saying that she found that her previous buyers were, I think it was 19 times more likely to buy than people who had never bought anything. And that's what we're trying to do with the tripwire, get people to buy something so then they're more likely to come back and buy something else. They kind of get people used to buying things from you. But yes, answer to your question, yes, we would put the tripwire on the confirmation page. Awesome, thanks, man. Longest answer to a really short question. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Any other questions from anyone? All right. Cool. Well, thanks so much, guys, uh, for coming on. Um, if you know anybody who runs online course businesses, point them our way if you, they ever need any help with any of this stuff. And um, I look forward to hopefully at some point catching you guys in person. Hey, John, real fast. Can oh, hello. Who's that? Sorry. Tom? I'm, so for, I'm, I'm super late. I had my first mastermind at the same time. And I oh. <laughs> double booked. So I do have online courses. That's my business. And so I would really, it's just, is the recording going to be available? Or yes. Be the recording is coming through as soon as it's converted to everybody. Okay, perfect. And then I'll maybe just send you a message on that. Uh, the DC and reach out to you. Yeah, awesome. Sweet. Okay. Perfect. Cheers, Sorry, Ryan. I couldn't make it. Appreciate That's it. all right. Cool. I'll send it through afterwards. Awesome. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Catch you all later. Thank you, John. Cheers, John.